Excellent, Doctor. Thank you. And it looks like we've got one last question. This is, uh, hopefully, I am pronouncing your name correctly, uh, Marita. Uh, please go ahead and unmute yourself for the uh, for Doctor Barnard. Here we go. Oh, did we lose her? I think we may have lost her. Um, okay, I I think that was turned out. Oh no, she's back. Welcome. Okay, and we have somebody else also. So that said. Marita, again, if I pronounce your name correctly, I hope, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Let's see if that works. Oh, she's having a pro says here you can't. Okay, I'm going to let you work on that. I'm going to go to Annie, and then we'll give you one more shot, Marita. Thank you. Uh, but you should be able to do it yourself. I'm not sure why that's not working. Um, but let's go to Annie. Uh, Annie, if you would go ahead and unmute yourself, that would be great. Hello. Hi there, Annie. Thank, thank you for uh, thank you for being part of the program. What's your question? Um. Okay. So I have been a vegan for uh, a numerous amount of years, but I have a lot of food allergies, like a ton of food allergies uh, currently, and I have taken those foods out of my diet. But like, I have so many food allergies. Like, there is only one bean that I can eat. Um. I. I mean, baking soda. I mean numerous things uh to where my diet is very restricted and it's a little frustrating and i don't know like how can i get rid of these um allergies and introduce them back into my system or is it a gut problem because they checked my gut flora and said it was pretty good but little exasperated with all the food allergies and how to get rid of them uh yeah let me ask you um what kinds of symptoms do the allergens cause um, it depends on the food. Um, I have full blown allergies to where I can't breathe and I'm gasping for air. Um, and those are really bad, like with uh, a peanut or uh, baking soda. Um, and I can't breathe down to the point where um, some things that I have, I have difficulty swallowing. So I know like grapes, I'm allergic to grapes because I can't swallow them. Um, and then other times I'll just start coughing really bad, but I can still like black beans, I can almost swallow those. So it goes from a whole scale, depending on how allergic I am. Okay. Um, well, you're, you're taking your symptoms seriously. That's really important because if something is causing breathing problems or other really serious issues, um, you just, you're going to have to avoid those foods. No, I don't have any magic answer for you. Um, you, you're, you're absolutely right that your gut will change. Uh, your gut has bacteria in it. And if you have unhealthy gut bacteria, um, it can cause quite dramatic changes. And, and we've seen, uh, for example, uh, a person, um, bit by a tick walking through the woods, they're bit by a tick. They start to get symptoms. They go to the doctor. The doctor gives them doxycycline, which is the right thing to do. Um, because it's going to knock out the, the, the germs that could hurt that person. But the doxycycline also knocked out their gut bacteria. And in the course of this, um, their gut, their, they now have unhealthy gut bacteria growing back. And they will discover that their gut is now leaky. And it's allowing all kinds of things to get into their blood. So let's say they eat a piece of bread. They never had a problem with gluten before. Now suddenly they're reacting to gluten. And so in other words, you can be not sensitive to something one day, and then a week later, you're now sensitive to it because your gut bacteria are changing. Your gut is now allowing larger portions, we believe, larger portions of the antigen into your bloodstream and you're reacting to them. Whereas before your gut wasn't so leaky and you're keeping them out. So this raises the question, what can I do to make my gut stronger so it doesn't let things into my blood so I'm not reacting to so darn many things. I'm reacting to beans, I'm reacting to grains and so forth. The short answer is, I don't think that science has a, I don't think that science really knows yet. What we do know is that a healthy gut microbiome shores up the gut wall as much as it can. And that means the higher fiber foods that you can tolerate. If you can't tolerate beans, don't eat beans. But if there are certain ones you can tolerate, that's good. Grains, I'm guessing you're probably all right with white rice and brown rice. Brown rice is gonna be a better one for you uh, because that will bring you um, healthy fiber and whichever grains you can tolerate, definitely eat them. If you're good with green leafy vegetables, you can't go wrong. Um, most of them are, are low allergen. Um, in other words, not very many people react to them. 
and you're going to find that they give you the fiber that really nourishes a healthy gut microbiome. Fruits, many of them are okay. You're probably fine with most of them, but there are some that, that you may be reacting to. Avoid the ones that you can't eat. Eat plenty of the ones that you can't. Uh, go easy on oils. Oils are a surprise. Even the seemingly healthy oils can sometimes cause the gut to get a little le leakier too. We want to avoid that. So uh, a low oil diet is a really good way um, to keep your gut being more selective about what gets into the blood and what, what might cause a reaction. So that's not a perfect answer to your question, but that's about where science has brought us. Thank you, doctor. And let's try uh, Marita one more time. I'm sourcing it's gonna work. If you'd go ahead and try to unmute yourself now. Hi there, Marita. Okay, can, can you hear me? Oh, yes. We can hear you fine. Thanks okay. for your patience. Okay, sorry about the delay there. Uh, last year I was diagnosed with breast cancer so immediately I gave up sugar, started juicing and adopted a vegan diet and I felt great. Then I was in a trial and I had a mastectomy. Then they wanted to do chemo. So I did two rounds and quit. They wanted to do six. And then they wanted to do radiation. So I've done a few rounds of that and I think I'm going to quit that too. And one of my alternative practitioners has told me that where there's cancer, there's candida. So the candida diet he has me on is almost keto. And <clears throat> so there's a lot of uh, fat and no starch, no fruit. And I'm wondering how I can fight candida and go back to the vegan diet because I felt really good when I was on that. Sure, um, let me ask you, do you have symptoms of candidiasis? Um, well, I have, from time to time, I have eczema, which I think might be related, and sometimes athlete's foot. Okay, well, if these things are coming and going, um, I, to tell you that I'm concerned. For, first of all, um, I'm sorry that you had this diagnosis. It sounds like you've really been tackling it, and you've been taking advantage of, of treatments that may be helpful to you. Um, I'm glad you're talking with your healthcare provider about it. Um, however, the role of diet is an important one. And researchers have looked at various diets and their relationship with cancer survival. And although their evidence base could be bigger, um, we already know that diets that are rich in vegetables and fruits, uh, along with physical exercise, do seem to help improve cancer survival. Diets that are low in fat seem to be associated with better survival too. And if you have been put on a diet that's fatty and that's neglecting some of the vegetables and fruits, that would make me nervous. Um, and so I would be hard pressed to use that as a fundamental part of your treatment. So if, if it were me, I would have, um, make sure that you're consulting with your caregiver and, and making sure that you're on the healthiest diet that you can. Uh, many, many, many practitioners nowadays are talking with uh, breast cancer patients about vegan, very low oil, and making sure that soy is part of your diet, assuming you tolerate it, because soy is associated with better survival as well. Anyway, I'm sorry you're dealing with these challenges, but good luck. I hope you get the good information you need from your own practitioner as well. Thank you. Thanks, doctor. We have just a few minutes left. We do have Allison up next. Allison, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you. Hi there, Allison. Hi, thank you, doctor. Um, I have a quick question. Um, I've had gut problems for years and years and years, and I've been to many people and I've gotten the answer that it's a spastic colon. I don't know. I just got COVID and it worked really good for the time I've had COVID, but, um, and when I go to the dentist and get frightened or any nervous thing, then I have no problem. Like, but other, th other than that, it's just, I've tried, um, I do eat plant-based. I read, um, this new doctor who was on yesterday, I forget his name, Will something. And he was saying that you shouldn't go on a plant-based diet if you have a problem with your colon. And, um, you know, I, I've just been on this merry-go-round a long time, but my question is, is I don't know if you're familiar with Grover's disease. It's like a skin condition that you kind of get hives and it's really uncomfortable and, um, I was wondering, do you think that's connected to the gut and the leaky gut and all of that kind of thing? Um, leaky gut can occur. 
Um, but yeah. let's let's go back a little bit. Um, there isn't anybody who for whom a plant based diet is is not the treatment of choice. Uh, or, or let me put it this way: there isn't anybody for whom a plant based diet is is a bad idea. Um, everybody should be. Following, I love it. I do. Yeah, yeah. Good. Everybody should be following a plant based diet, mm -hmm. and particularly for people. With, spastic colon is a term that's used by different people in different ways. But for some people, they they mean that well. Sometimes you're kind of constipated, and when other times the opposite occurs, and sometimes you'll have pain and bloating and that kind of stuff. Um, and for most people, what really helps is to emphasize healthy grains like brown rice, um, beans in kind of moderate quantities, always really well cooked, cooked green vegetables, those kinds of things minimizing oils. Oils are kind of tricky on the digestive tract. You wouldn't think they'd have any effect, but oils are, a, when you eat a, a, a greasy diet, it's a little bit like taking your intestinal tract and instead of having the normal motions of your intestinal tract where all the contents are moving slowly down, downstream, it's kind of like taking your intestinal tract and squeezing it with hands in both at the same time so that things are going back and forth and not moving the way they want to move. So we really get the grease out of the diet, healthy grains, beans, vegetables, and things tend to get better. What does that do? Um, in addition to improving the gut motility, it also helps shore up that leaky gut so that things that can cause reactions are less likely to pass from the gut interior into the bloodstream. So give it a try and see if it doesn't, doesn't help.